You'll start understanding it soon. Uh, explain this to me, won't you? It's all inside the code. Hi, everyone. I'm Olivia, and in this episode, I want to go over Link and C Sharp. My background is in .NET, so naturally, I've come across quite a few Link queries. The problem is, when I was first getting started with a big code base, I was definitely guilty of simply copy and pasting queries from elsewhere in the code, making a couple of tweaks that I thought would fit, and then called it a day. I never really took the time to understand what Link is and how powerful it can be. So today, I'm going to show you a demo so you can learn what Link is in just a few minutes. I'll be using this repo on GitHub so that you can try out the code yourself. But for now, let's explain. All right, so I have this sample code here that has two classes, student and grade, each with their own properties. The program then creates lists of students and grades as sample data, and then performs five different queries on that data using link, and finally prints out the query results. Before we dive in, let's take a step back and answer the question, what is link? I'm going to head over to the chat view of Copilot chat and simply ask that exact question, what is link? And we get a quick response saying link, which stands for language integrated query, is used for querying different data sources with syntax similar to SQL. So I feel like that did a great job of giving me an overview of what Link is, but I also want to know why I would use Link. So when I ask Copilot chat, I get a really good summary of its value adds, like consistent syntax, more readable code, and improved performance. That lays a great foundation for us to understand the concept of Link, so let's now see it in action. Like I mentioned, this code has several different Link queries. And actually, one of my favorite ways to figure out what snippets of code are doing is to use the slash doc command in Copilot chat, which will generate a comment telling me what that code is doing. So I'm going to select this first query and use the keyboard shortcut Control I on my Windows or command I if you're on a Mac, and run the slash doc command, which gives us a nice comment that this first query gets all students whose age is greater than 20. Now let's look at the syntax to see how this query is structured. If you're familiar with SQL, this will look really similar to what you're used to. Basically, it's saying that from our students data set, where a student's age is greater than 20, select that student. So that will return every student in our student's data set whose age is greater than 20. Let's check out this next query, which is a little more complicated because it uses a join. So we are saying from the student's data set, join it with the grades data set based on the ID in the student's data set matching the student ID in the grades data set. Then we have where the grades score is greater than or equal to 80 and select the student's name and the grades course. And this is why the join is necessary here, because we're retrieving data properties that exist in both tables. If we were only looking at the grade table, we'd have no way to get the student's name, so we have to join the data sets. So again, we can run the slash doc command to summarize, and we see that yes, this joins the two data sets and selects the student's name and the grades course with a score of 80 or above. So the next two queries are similar to the first, where we are basically just doing a filter on the data. And as I'm looking at this last query, it's similar to query two, but I'm wondering if there's a way to make this code a little easier to read. So I'm going to run the slash simplify command in the chat view to see if we can get a simpler code suggestion. So you'll notice that what it suggests is actually changing the code from the SQL-like syntax to a syntax that looks more like invoking a method. And let's actually ask about the different ways you can write link queries so we can learn a bit more about why we got this suggestion. And when we do that, we get this great response giving us an overview of query versus method syntax. Turns out these different syntaxes can be used interchangeably with link, so it really just comes down to your personal preference for which way is simpler to read for the given query. All right, so finally, let's go ahead and run this program and verify that our queries are giving us the expected results. So I'm going to run the command .NET run in the terminal. And if we scroll through the output, we can see we are getting results that look to be expected. But actually at the second to last query, uh, where we have grades for courses containing algebra, we are not getting any results, which is odd because if I look at our sample data, we definitely have linear algebra. So let's look back at the query and it looks good to me. I'm not really seeing the problem. So I'm going to see if Copilot can help me by running the slash fix command and saying this should return grades for courses containing algebra. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. So Copilot's like, well, yeah, you spelled algebra wrong. <laughs> and we've all been here where you've been staring at code all day and your brain just completely overlooks little typos like this. So now when we run this, we get that expected result. Now it's never a great idea to only rely on catching errors like this at runtime. So you should always have unit tests. So first I'm going to pop this query into its own method so I can easily test it. And now that I have this method, I'm going to run the slash test command, and that's going to generate a unit test for me that I can then run to make sure my query is working and catch any errors before shipping my code. As you work more and more with link, you might end up with some really complicated queries across your data sets. So it's always smart to generate unit tests for your queries so you can ensure you are getting the expected results. In this video, using features integrated in VS Code, we learned what link is, saw some queries in action, learned about query versus method syntax, and reinforced the importance of having unit tests. Was this helpful to you? How would you explain link? We would love to see your explanation in a video or blog post. If you create one, drop the link in the comments and we'll pin the most liked explanation. And while you're here, make sure to check out our other videos in the VS Code Explains series. Happy coding!